Ghosts and ghouls and a witch's rhyme, zombie walks and a child's cry, empty schools all the spirits awake, an abandoned hut near a festering lake, a churchyard dug with a bloody spade, a floorboard ruined by an axman's blade, blood covered ceilings of a child's room, the basement's a place for a mummy's tomb. And if by chance you reach the top floor, a snippet of blood, guts and gore, a tailor's dummy comes alive with shears, a house that changes to another man's fears. On the outside this house has flowers and shrubs, on the inner our body rots in the bathtub. This house contains every nightmare and fear, a haunted taunt to which few go near. You'll never return once you enter inside, a nightmare building in the garden of your mind. Good evening to you, sir. Would you like a story? One about fear, or life, or maybe both? A bloodthirsty monster, or your mind playing tricks? For our first story, I tell of everybody's fear. The fear of the dark. It is especially frightening when it seems to be alive. I hated the darkness. I was, I was scared, scared of what might lurk where the light can't reach. I hated the fact that you could never be sure what was hiding in the darkest of places and preparing to strike out at any given moment. With darkness it brought shadows that paraded and cavorted along the walls, the stuff nightmares are made of. Tonight had the potential to be different. I stayed late at the office to finish, finish some work. I had drawn the curtains and flicked on all the lights, telling myself that I would only be a few more minutes finishing up. The night was unusually calm and my eyes skittered around the room until they settled on the computer screen. Something caught my eye from across the room. My fingers hovered precariously over my flashlight that was forever by my side for reassurance. My heart attempted to slow down to its gentle, steady pace, but I was still stuck in the phase of fear. Tonight my senses refused to relax, my jaw tensed and my fingers flexed. The hairs on the nape of my neck stood on end. I swung my flashlight around, shining light in the darkest of corners for reassurance. My heart fluttered timidly as I caught sight of a dark, mysterious figure moving almost ghost-like along the wall. My breath caught in my throat, making me choke. The noise alerted these phantoms of my presence and their heads swivelled in unison to face me. I staggered backwards until my back hit the wall. What are these things? I seemed to be glued to the wall in sheer terror, as two hand silhouettes travelled over my body until they reached my throat. And now, let me tell you a tale of when science took a step too far. She's scared of monkeys, because monkeys are the future, with hands and noses and eyes and ears, and opposable thumbs and feelings and emotions. She's scared of monkeys, because monkeys are evolution, and evolution is death. The unknown darkness, suffocating silence, endless time passing in consciousness, regret of a wasted life. She's scared of monkeys, because monkeys are death. Finally, we meet a well no moral. Never talk to strangers. Our story starts with the Robinson family. Mum, Dad and six-year-old girl Lucy. The Robinson family moved from Regent Street in London. As the dad works for a massive paper company, they moved to a little cottage on the edge of a forest so the dad could find new species of trees for him to use for his paper company. Once the removal vans had done their job, they were left alone and Lucy was itching to go out and explore the forest. Go out and explore the forest if you want to, but make sure you always keep the house in sight, okay honey? And wrap up warm, and don't forget your scarf. So off Lucy went, and as she closed the front door behind her, she saw the most peculiar sight, an old woman, just staring at her, hunched over, crippled it seemed like, and wrapped around in a thin shawl. And within a blink of an eye, the old woman was gone. She pushed it to the back of her mind and went off exploring. As she went, she kept looking back, checking that she could always see the house. As she got deeper into the forest, she heard the most strange noises. They got louder and louder the deeper she went. Thick, warped branches started to close in on her. There was a rustle in the wind that kept on saying, Lucy, 
Lucy. At that point, Lucy started to worry. She looked back. She could still see the house, her house, home. Lucy was at the heart of the forest, right in front of her, her house. Impossible. Smaller, though. The wood, twisted and black, breaking off like it had some sort of disease. And standing in front of the house was the old woman. The old woman spoke to Lucy. Lucy, come inside. Your mother gave you an hour. You've only been out 40 minutes. But my mum told me never to talk to strangers. And the old woman replied. But I know your name. I'm no stranger. But in Lucy's naivety, she followed the old woman, who led Lucy by the hand, walking up the steps into the house, closing in on Lucy, the warped, thick trees, blocking her view, the door shut behind her. She lost sight of the house. Lucy was never seen again.